Today I have a character build for you, the Heavy Cross Bow Cleric. So choosing a race for the Heavy Cross Bow Cleric is fairly flexible. You can take, you know, Varian Human to pick up a feat early because we do like feats with this, this class. Or we could take something like a Dwarf to give us heavy armor instead of the medium armor that we're going to be using otherwise. There's a lot of flexibility here, so just kind of go where your heart tells you. For me, I'm just going to do a variant human just to keep it simple and to get that starting feat, which is going to be Sharpshooter. As for our point buy, we're going to want to get 16 in Wisdom and 16 in Dexterity, and then have 15 in Constitution and just dump the rest. Now we are going to be a War Domain Cleric. The interesting thing about War Domain Cleric is the War Priest ability lets us make an attack as a bonus action. And using a heavy crossbow, we're able to attack and then reload and attack using our bonus action. The loading property only stops us from doing a multi-attack and this technically isn't a multi-attack. So we're actually fairly efficient with heavy crossbows, which is an unusual thing to be efficient in, which is why we're exploring this. Plus, I think it's a fun little bonus that we are a cleric with a crossbow. I really like the imagery of the crossbow being our holy symbol. You know, it is a cross and it's like a Christian crusader. I like the idea with heavy armor, but, you know, a heavy armored crossbow wielding crusader of light would be sick. It's just a dope image. However, we're probably going to be taking medium armor half plate. So at level one, our wisdom proficiency modifier times a day, so three times a day, we're able to make an extra attack as a bonus action. So that's three extra crossbow attacks a day, which is actually pretty good at level one. Not only that, we're also picking up sharpshooter really early, so we can add that minus five plus 10 right off the gate. Now, there's some nuance when you should be doing this. Once it gets us past a certain AC, it's not gonna be efficient, and below that AC, it is going to be efficient. So you kind of have to play with numbers and figure it out, or just go with your instinct. At level two, we pick up Channel Divinity Guided Strike. This allows us to add a plus 10 after we roll to see if we hit. So this makes our sharpshooter significantly more accurate, very likely to hit whenever we choose. Now this can be done once per short rest, and it's basically guaranteeing a hit, which on average is going to be around 18.5 damage so once a day we're just guaranteeing 18.5 damage which is just going to increase our damage output in general at this point it's also worth talking about how good bless is for this build when we cast bless we're casting it on two other people which you know they get all the benefits but both of the benefits affect us a lot because it makes our sharpshooter attacks far more accurate meaning we're doing far more uh, consistent damage but on top of that, Bless also keeps its concentration, its, its own concentration up. So Bless just has fantastic synergy with this build. Not to mention that I really love healing word on archers because we're kind of already in the back line. We don't have to move a lot of our positioning to use these really impactful healing words to pick up our downed enemies. So I think we're in a great position to take advantage of healing word. At level three, we pick up second level spells. The one that's going to be most significant to our style is going to be spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon lets us use our wisdom modifier to attack as a bonus action. So even when we are done using our bonus action crossbow attacks, we still have bonus action attacks. At level four, I'm picking up resilient constitution. This is going to give us a plus one to our constitution, getting us to that 16. And it's also going to give us proficiency efficiency in constitution saving throws, making our concentration that much better. At level five, not only do we get third level spells, but our cantrips also get better. Now we might be thinking, hey, now this, you know, Toll the Dead is potentially doing 2d12 damage and it's far more likely to hit than a sharpshooter boosted attack. And sometimes that's going to be true and sometimes it's not. So there's some nuance there. But what will always be true is that we need a melee option and Toll the Dead actually can kind of act as our melee option, which is pretty, pretty unique and pretty cool. So something else to take note of is we're always going to have spiritual guardians, but aren't going to be in position to take advantage of it quite as often. Because unlike most clerics who are bound within kind of 60 feet to use their cantrips and attacks and whatnot, we have 600 feet. We have 10 times the range of our any of our cleric counterparts save a couple who get cantrips that are at 120 feet, but then we have five times the amount. So we have more range than most clerics do with like our basic attacks. So this means we're probably not going to be using our third level spells 
for spiritual guardians as often so we can kind of save them for reaction based spells spells that come to mind for me are dispel magic and beacon of hope beacon of hope if we need those wisdom saves and dispel magic if we really just need to dispel one of their spells it's kind of like a proactive reactive thing it is worth noting that at level five our sharpshooter is going to be significantly less powerful than any other marshals they just get extra attack every turn and that's going to have far more impact on sharpshooter than our channel divinity ever could so we are kind of falling behind the marshals at this point and our crossbow is really becoming more of a cantrip for us and not the main thing that we do we're kind of setting up our fight winning spells and then we're using our cantrips in the back line at level six our channel divinity upgrades to be able to affect our allies and there's some nuance in deciding this if there is a rogue who's attacking with sneak attack, even with sharpshooter, we're not going to compare in damage. So we should be using our channel divinity to make sure they're hitting more than ourselves. So there is kind of a, an analysis that needs to be done with your squad on who is getting the most impact out of their single attacks, and that's who we should contribute our channel divinities towards. And if no one is able to take advantage of it, we still can. At level eight, I'm skipping some levels here, but at level eight, I'm actually picking up Divine Strike for like the first time out of all the cleric builds. Blessed Strikes is just too efficient. And you're usually going to take it, but here I'm taking Divine Strikes for many different reasons. One is I want my bow to be better than my cantrips. I want to have an excuse to fire my bow more often. And at level 14, we're going to be going to be doing more damage because I see us using the crossbow far more often than we are going to be using our cantrips. And so I want to take advantage of that. Plus, it's just kind of cool to do blessed strikes, especially with the war domain cleric. We don't want to be a cantrip cleric. There's so many of those. We want to be a weapons cleric. That's what war domain's all about. Some nuance at level eight is that we can only get our blessed strikes attack off once a turn. So if we miss our attack, sometimes it's going to be worth it to use our either our channel divinity or our war priest feature to try and hit again so that we're proccing our blessed strikes every turn. I think the crossbow cleric is pretty dang unique. There's not going to be many builds that one use a heavy crossbow, but what other cleric build is really being kind of an archer archetype? You really don't get it a lot. And so I'm really excited to have explored this kind of very niche build. And it took War Domain Cleric for me and took it from like, uh, it's probably the worst of the clerics is kind of how I viewed it, to, and don't get me wrong, all clerics are amazing. You can play any cleric if you enjoy the flavor and it's going to be great. So don't take that as never play War Domain. War Domain is completely viable. But for me, it took War Domain from being this like, oh, it's just a cleric with a couple of mediocre features, kind of helps your marshals out a little bit. And it took it to actually a pretty exciting subclass for me where I'm wanting to play this character now. I really like this character concept and would enjoy playing it. So that's a big deal for me. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video. If you did, go ahead and show us some love. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment telling us what you thought. We release new D&D content every single day. So if that's interesting to you, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.